So I've come today to run a session called Story Listening and it's based on a book that I'm writing with my colleague Claire Craig. And what we want to do is encourage people to realise that storytelling is useful for collective intelligence imagining of the future, but story listening can be really helpful too. So we're going to take an existing work of literature, a short story by Ursula Le Guin, and we have a series of prompts to get people to use the story to open up their imagining about the future. The session and the book that it's based on are the result of years of thinking and research and frustration with the limited ways in which people think about the future and the limited methods that they use to make their decisions. So we want to expand the ways in which people um, think and the way in which they can imagine. And we think that stories and learning how to listen to stories critically and carefully is a way to do that. I'm coming here hopefully as open-minded as the people who are going to take part. And what I hope uh, or anticipate is energy and enthusiasm and perhaps actually the generation of hope at a time when, particularly for some of us from the United Kingdom, that's a rare commodity. It's a fairly new term. I think very simply it just means raising awareness of and being self-conscious about how you think about the future. A lot of people don't realise that the decisions they're making, whether they're individual or collective, are based on lots of assumptions that are embedded in them about where we can go and how we can go there and who that we is. And futures literacy means becoming more aware and more self-conscious of that kind of thinking. I think that futures literacy is not just a way of becoming self-conscious, but it's a way of becoming in control and realising that the future isn't already out there. It hasn't already happened. It's not about predicting the future. We, what we do now will determine what future we have. And that gives us the power and a power that many of us, I think, feel we don't hold at the moment. The story that we are working on is a wonderfully open-ended story and it has a lot of questions built into it which means it's wonderful for this kind of exercise and I'm also ending with a question. The story ends with some people leaving the city in which they live and I'm going to ask our participants to ask where are they going? Are they going somewhere better? Are they going somewhere different? Are they going somewhere worse? And hopefully they will leave the room wondering where they're going to go. <laughs> well, we don't live in a utopia, but I don't believe we live in a dystopia either. And there can be a danger in thinking in those types of extremes. And what listening to stories can do is develop a very nuanced and sophisticated sense of the good things and the bad things, but how we can work through them to create a future that's better rather than worse. Whilst a lot of today is going to be fun and creative, um, it's not perhaps the kind of mood or energy that you experience if you sit in a boardroom or in a, in a policy room. I really genuinely believe that these kinds of ways of thinking about the future have to move into those spaces. We have to develop creative imaginations in serious decision making spaces if we're going to create a world that exists for our children and our future, but also that's one we want to live in. Thank you.